Hello and welcome to this breakout session on what our recent IFC4 certification means for BRICSCAD BIM users. My name is Cameron Lobdell, Technical Marketing Manager here at Brixis. In this video, I'm going to begin with file outputs, what IFC options are included in BRICSCAD BIM and briefly touch on how to choose. Then I'm going to discuss project setup and three new class definitions that have resulted from our work on IFC4. I'm going to touch on a new productivity enhancement for 3D modeling, BIM update story height. I'm then going to demonstrate a new setting that controls how multiply elements, think of roofs, slabs, and walls, are represented and quantified during data validation. And finally, I'm going to take a few moments to show you what it looks like on the receiving end of a BIM workflow. To begin, BricsCAD BIM is now IFC4 certified, and this is great news for specialty trade subcontractors. From the IFC export command, notice several model view definitions. 2x3 is the predecessor to IFC4 and is a great option still used on many projects today. And worth mentioning, BricsCAD BIM is also IFC 2x3 certified. The design transfer view is intended for collaborative model development across teams. Think here of exploring design options or responding to RFIs. While alternatively, when it's time to deliver on a project milestone and from V25.2 onwards, the IFC4 reference view is the certified output for IFC4. Use this option when providing an asset for model federation and data validation. Also available in BricsCAD BIM is the option available in experimental mode to export IFC 4.3. However, be aware, this is not the same model view definition as IFC 4 and is not a certified output in BricsCAD BIM. This is an output typically used for infrastructure projects. Now, speaking to the subcontractors among us, one of the disadvantages of joining a BIM project after the design team is having to race to make up ground on project setup. It's really important that even the most seemingly basic information being shared across teams complies with project standards. If it doesn't, the likely consequences is having your approvals delayed. For this, BricsCAD BIM makes project setup for BIM collaboration really simple. From the BIM project browser, I can input relevant project details and I can customize these fields to better suit my team's specific needs and my project's specific requirements. And this is the same browser that will display the various named views, numbered sheets, and any relevant files being stored within my project's directory. Importantly, remember my project's name indicated here. On export and new in v25.2, this will now receive the IFC class definition, IFC project. Likewise, using the Spatial Locations Manager, the project site can now also be named to comply with the project's standards. I select the site at the top of the hierarchy and provide a name. In v25.2, this site name will now be exported as the class definition IFC site and will be available for query downstream and during data validation done by your project's information managers. And why do these small details matter? These class definitions are especially helpful when working on larger projects, perhaps with multiple buildings or even on infrastructure projects with multiple sites. But they also represent just a few of the many class definitions that have been built into BricsCAD BIM and are required for our building smart certification. But also you'll know when you're needing to get your shop drawings approved, also being expected to align your 3D models with BIM assets represents a huge risk. This is why in V25.1, we introduced the first phase of our georeferencing capability for IFC4 workflows. In V25.2, we've advanced this georeferencing capability, ensuring that details that are being modeled in BricsCAD BIM are being positioned precisely in place for export into a federated model downstream. First, I select the geolocation button from the home screen, or I can type geographic location into my command prompt. I click the ellipses button to select the project appropriate coordinate system. In this case, I know that my project is using the EPSG 6355 as the coordinate reference system or CRS. And next at import, select the IFC that has been provided to you from the design team. 
From the IFC Import Settings dialog box, you can filter the data you'd like to import, and critically, you can use the dropdown to select which IFC reference point you'd like to use to align your model's origin. In this case, I've been instructed by the project's information manager to select the IFC project location, and I'll click Import. Now, look what's happened. If I return to my Spatial Locations Manager, I can see that all of the relevant project datums have been imported. As I mentioned before, being added to a project well after the design has been coordinated is a challenge. But here at Brixis, we are giving you a tool that can make getting up to speed only a matter of minutes. OK, you can see here I currently have the bottom joint of my curtain wall system modeled to the level 1 SSL elevation of 16 feet above grade. But I've just received a sketch detail from the design team. I'm going to need to revise the joint to accommodate the slab edge. The bottom transom of this curtain wall is going to need to be raised 9 inches without impacting the curtain wall on other levels. From my model, this can be easily achieved with a new tool in V25.2, BIM Update Story Height. It gives parametric control over level height adjustments. First, I'll select the level that needs to be adjusted. These are the same levels we just referenced in the Spatial Locations Manager. I understand that only the curtain wall system needs to be affected by this change. All other components at this level are outside of my scope and need to be left unchanged. And, as easily as that, my update has been made. No tedious remodeling required. I can confirm the update here on my story bar, and I can return once more to my Spatial Locations Manager. This level no longer represents a structural slab level, so let's rename it to reflect that this level now represents the top of slab edge. What could have taken a half day of meticulous remodeling was done in mere moments. And just one more update to V25.2 to mention before we prepare for export. Here, I've leapt to the roof level of our project. I've received the following detail from the design team and need to model these wall compositions accordingly. Using my familiar 2D drafting tools, I've measured a total of 11 and a half inches for wall thicknesses. Back in my model, I used the BIM Compositions panel and the Compositions dialog box to build up the compositions as they're being specified in the construction detail. I can use the BIM Attach Composition command to assign these multiple plies to my already modeled walls. By default, in V25.2, these multiply components will be exported with this geometric representation. If I measure the wall thickness, you'll see it's the correct 11 and a half inches. Back in BricsCAD BIM, navigate to Settings, BIM, Import and Export, and IFC. From here, toggle the Export Multiply Elements as Aggregated Elements. And now, after all of our work, we are finally ready to export for federation and validation. Simply select IFC Export from the Home tab, select Entire Model when prompted, and select the IFC4 Reference View. And here's our delivered asset inside a model checker. I can also see that the interface with the slab edge has been adjusted. And I can also see that both my IFC project and IFC site classes have been defined. 